Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2010 IMO problem number one. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 15, ideally 45, but not more than 90 minutes. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you take five minutes to read the problem and get your first ideas out on paper. Now's the time to pause. So let's begin. In sum, we have a functional equation from the reals to the reals, which satisfies this relationship. f of the floor of x times y is equal to f of x times the floor of f of y. So with functional equations, it's a matter of plugging in specific values to narrow down what the functional equation can be. Here, the first thing that comes to my mind is plugging in x equals 0 and then y equals 0 separately. And as a general principle in solving functional equations, you want to plug stuff in one at a time. So what we get with x equals 0 is f of 0 is equal to f of 0 times the floor of f of y. Now this gives us, for all real numbers y, that f of 0 times the floor of f of y minus 1 is zero for all real numbers y. This means that either f of zero is zero or that the floor of f of y is one for all real numbers y. Now we can try to solve these two cases. I will start with floor of y is equal to one. I would invite you five to ten minutes to try and solve this case. Let's do this. So what we get is this, but because the floor of y is 1, this transforms into f of floor of x times y is equal to f of x for all real numbers x and y. Take a minute to figure out what this means. I hope you took the minute, because by plugging in x equals 1, we get f of y is equal to f of 1 for all y that are real numbers. In other words, f of x is equal to a constant, which is between 2 and 1. And that is between 1 and 2 because the floor of that constant needs to be equal to 1. Now that we've found this functional equation, let's plug that in back to the original to see if it actually satisfies the original functional equation. Let's do that. And what we get is that the left-hand side is equal to c, and the right-hand side is equal to c times the floor of c. And because c is between 1 and 2, the floor of c is 1, so it's c times 1 equals to c. In other words, this functional equation is a solution. Now let's go to the next case. So in this case, I would invite you to pause now for 5 to 20 minutes and try to push this case forward, try to solve it, put your ideas out on paper. Now here is one approach. So plugging in y equals zero doesn't give us anything new, it just zeros everything out. But we can still use f of zero equals zero in another way. Namely, we can zero out this part of the functional equation. And how we do that is by plugging in values x and y such that this is zero, without plugging in x or y equal to zero. Now, for that to be the case, it is enough that the floor of x is zero, which would mean it is enough that x be between zero and one. So let's plug that in. If x is equal to a, such that a is between zero and one, we get f of zero is equal to zero is equal to f of a times the floor of f of y, where y can be any real number. Now take a minute to figure out what this means. Well, this means that either we have f of a is 0 for all a between 0 and 1, or we have that the floor of f of y is equal to zero for all y that are real. Now let's take it from here. Now if the floor of f of y is zero for all y that are real numbers, then that would mean that 
f of the floor of x times y would be equal to 0 for all x and y that are real numbers. Take a minute to figure out what this means. Well, by plugging in x equals 1, we would get that f of y is 0 for all y that are real numbers, which, if we check, would be a solution to the equation because the left-hand side would be 0 and the right-hand side would also be 0 times 0 equal to 0. So, let's look at the second case, namely that f of a is 0 for all a that are between 0 and 1. Now take five minutes to work with this. We have this equation and we know that f of a is 0 if a is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. So can we use that fact in any way? Well, if we make the left hand side 0, we will automatically make the right hand side 0 and we won't get any new information. So the idea is, can you make the left, the right hand side zero and keep the left hand side afloat? And the idea is you can, if you plug in y equals a, where a is between zero and one exclusive. What do you get then? Well, you get that f of a is zero on the right hand side. So you get zero on the right hand side. But the left-hand side is open to experimentation. We get that f of the floor of x times a is 0 for all x that are real numbers. Take a minute to figure out what this means. Well, it means this. f of n times a is equal to 0 for all n, which are integers, and a, which are between 0 and 1. The reason we can say this is because the floor of x runs through all the possible integers. Now pause for three to five minutes and ask yourselves, what numbers does n times a cover? While you pause, I invite you to rigorously prove what your intuition is telling you. Now is the time to pause. Here's how I see it. So it covers all the real numbers R. Namely, if R is a real number, n times a is going to be equal to R, with n different from 0, if and only if R over n is equal to some a between 0 and 1. What do we need for this to be true? Well, there only needs to exist a integer n such that R divided by n is between 0 and 1. Now, the first integer that comes to mind, for me at least, is n equals the ceiling of r. However, this number isn't exactly between 0 and 1 when r is a positive integer. So to change that, I would just add a 1. And we're done, right? Well, not so fast. This is a tricky part. What if r is negative? Well, if it's, say, minus... 2.5, then what we would get here is minus 2 plus 1, we would get minus 1, and this number, minus 2.5 over minus 1, would not be between 0 and 1. So for negative r, we need a different n. Luckily, such an n is easy to find. It is namely the floor of r minus 1. There are, of course, countless other examples, and the best thing for you to do is to pick an example that makes it easy for you to prove that r over n is actually between 0 and 1 exclusive. So now let's build off of this idea and formalize this now. Here is the formalization. If f of a is 0 for all a between 0 and 1, as we assumed, then we have f of the floor of x times a is 0 for all x that are real numbers and a between 0 and 1. Then, if z is a positive real number, then we set x to be twice the ceiling of z and a to be z divided by twice the ceiling of z. And then we know by the ceiling function that this is less than or equal to 
z over 2 times z, which is less than or equal to, namely equal to, 1 over half. And a is positive because z and the ceiling of z are both positive real numbers. On the other hand, if z is a negative real number, then picking x to be twice the floor of z and a to be z over twice time twice the floor of z, we get that this is a positive real number because it's a negative divided by a negative number. And we get the inequality from the floor, namely that this is less than or equal to z times 2 times z, because these are negative numbers, which is less than or equal to, namely equal to 1 half. So in both instances, a is between 0 and 1, and x is a integer, and we would get that f of z in both cases is 0. Given this holds for any real number z, this means we're done in this case. Now this gives us a solution, namely f of x equals 0 for all x which are real numbers. Plugging it into the original, we see we, that this actually works, namely we get 0 is equal to 0 times the floor of 0, which is 0. Now let's sum it all up. When we began the problem, we plugged in x equals 0, and that led us to two cases, either f of 0 being 0, or the floor of f of y being 1 for all real numbers y. Then what happened was, we solved the case the floor of y equals 1. Namely, we figured out that the floor of y being 1 for all real numbers y, implied that f of x was a constant, and that constant had to be between 1 and 2. From there, we checked that the constant c, where c is greater than or equal to 1, but strictly less than 2, works. And it did. It actually solved our functional equation. We got c's on both sides. After that, we went on to the case f of 0 equals 0. And the idea we had was make this part of the functional equation 0. So that's what we did. Which then led us to two cases, namely f of a is 0 for all a between 0 and 1, or the floor of y is 0 for all real numbers y, and then we solved each of those cases individually. In the case the floor of y equals 0, we finished quite quickly, just plugging in x equals 1 gave us the finish. And in the case f of a is equal to 0, we showed that every number z, every real number z, can be represented as the floor of x times a, where x is some real number, and a between 0 and 1 exclusive. This implied that f of x was 0 for all real numbers x. Then we checked that, and what we got was 0 is equal to 0 times the floor of 0, which is 0. This meant that we had two solutions to our functional equations, namely, f of x is a constant for all real numbers x, where the constant is either 0 or it's a constant that is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2. We plug that in, checked it work, and as always, thanks for problem solving.